All right, everyone, we'll get started for today. Uh, anyone who has a question, go ahead and put your name in the chat and we'll get started. Andy, lead us off. Hey, Richard, how are you? Great, how are you? Good. Uh, I was wondering how you guys are, are handling Christmas. Obviously, playing on Christmas is a huge honor for the NBA and new for you guys in this weird year. But how are you guys handling it just with, with players and celebrating and limits on being able to do so? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's great that we can play. Uh, I think we're all excited about it. Uh, but it's also it's tough for everybody. Um, but, you know, we, we got to keep it in perspective. It's all how you look at it. Um, you know, unfortunately, on Christmas Day, we have to come in early and, and be tested. Um, we're going to have shoot around uh, two o'clock. The game time is a little bit, you know, uh, not ideal as well. It's seven. Um, but it, it is what it is. I mean, it's it's. I've said it over and over again. I mean, you're trying to pull off sports in the middle of the pandemic. Um, I think the Big Ten felt it's better to keep them here so you don't have to send them home and deal with all the quarantining. Uh, my whole thing on it was if they're going to be here, let's play some games. It's better than, you know, sitting in their dorm, um, not doing anything. Uh, you know, so it's not, it's not perfect. It's not ideal by any means. Uh, but again, I'll say it over and over again. It beats the alternative, which is not playing at all. Marcus Fuller, we'll go over to you. So we will, Andy, I'm sorry. One more, we will do, um, we'll try to, we're going to do a little something on Wednesday, a little team kind of get together deal. Um, you know, we, we trying to figure out all the logistics, get them a really nice meal, uh, as well. And, and, uh, you know, kind of do it that way. I mean, and, uh, Obviously, just try to make the best of it, you know, and be conscious of, you know, they don't get to go home. That stinks for them. So, you know, we're, we're just going to try to create as much positive energy as we can. You don't strike me as a caroler. <laughs> no, not much of a caroler. But, hey, if it gets them to, you know, play hard, play uh, defense, I'll do it. Gladly do it. <laughs> All right, Marcus, go ahead. Are they going to have any presents uh, to open? Christmas morning. I mean, you got a lot of time before the game. Time out for me. <laughs> for you, for you, for your family, for the players. I mean, you got Christmas morning, right? So you. you yeah. Get... Yeah. No. Um, yeah. I think we got to get tested at, at, at 9 30, 10 o'clock. Uh, my kids will certainly be getting up a lot earlier than our players. Uh, so I'm sure by about nine, nine or so, I'll be ready to get out of that house anyway. Um, so we were able to get them, you know, our players a little something within the rules, um, as well, you know, to make sure we're taking care of them. Um, you know, so it's, uh, again, it's, it's not ideal, but we're still excited, uh, to be able to pull off seven games in a non-conference and be able to hopefully, uh, hopefully, you know, play Iowa, uh, with our whole roster. That, so the Iowa game, you know, you know, this is a team that right now stands as the best in the Big Ten. If you go by the rankings, but they have the best player for sure. Um, coming off the St. Louis game, you guys play incredible defense. Uh, it was a tough challenge there. So um, talk about the matchup uh, versus Iowa, what they present. Well, I mean, they got a lot of returners. You know, I mean, it, they got guys who have been in this league for, you know, a couple of years now and who have won. Um and that's very, very beneficial, especially when you're going through a pandemic where you don't have as much time in the summer or in the fall, or you've had to pause or so on. So um, that machine kind of runs itself. And, you know, obviously uh, Garza is a very unique player, um, but they've also got great pieces around them. Uh, one of the best offensive teams in the country, they've got great length. Um, you know, so it's, uh, there's a lot of guys that are going to be playing on Christmas day uh, for our team who've never seen them, you know, so that's going to be a bit of an adjust period adjustment period to go against, you know, such a high powered uh, fast offense. Um, you know, so we're going to have to be ready right away and, and, and be able to show them on film to the best of our ability. Andy, we'll go back to you. It was a, a little bit of foul trouble for, for Liam against St. Louis. 
is there a varying of message or consistency in message when it comes to that for him? Well, you know, it, a little bit of it was, and there may have been one or two that I don't agree were a foul, but I could see certainly from the ref standpoint where maybe it was, um, maybe a little bit of positioning, you know, and then probably a, um, you know, an awareness of when to try to block a shot versus wall up. Uh, but he's a terrific shot blocker, you know, but he's got to, there's got to be a balance there of, of when to wall up versus when to go for the block. And then Marcus, we'll go back to you. So when it comes to Liam, uh, do you let Ed kind of handle that challenging him and I mean, the family dynamic? I know he, he obviously works with the big men. How does that work? You know, um, just noticing it from well, afar. Well, I would, say, I would say um, uh, there's, there's never, never been a time where we've lost where Ed Conroy has been blamed for the loss. So just understand that, you know, it falls on me. Uh, and that message goes from the top all the way down to the assistant coaches. So, um, you know, we want everybody coaching Liam. It's not just Ed, you know, I mean, it's um, certainly their family. Um, and maybe there's things that, you know, Ed can, can, talk to me about because he's obviously closer with and that's no different than maybe an assistant who's recruited a guy or so on but um, no I mean it, it's on me to coach the team and uh, it's on the assistants to pass along you know what it is that the standard is and, and be consistent with that every single day so there's no one guy coaches the bigs and one guy coaches the guards uh, we're, we're all coaching Minnesota and um, you know it's everybody's responsibility to to you know help this program win. Any other questions for coach? Andy, go ahead. You have uh, new players come in. Obviously they come in as, as the stars in high school and sometimes have to find their role uh, within the team and, and contribute where they can. How do you try to transition those guys? Obviously there's a deeper learning curve for Daniel Loturo versus someone else, but how do you kind of massage that when, when you got guys coming in and their, their impact changes? takes time. It, it, it's a learning experience. Um, it, 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 it doesn't happen overnight. You know, even guys like Liam or Brandon or Booth, like, yeah, you, you know, Liam, you were a really good player and Brandon, you were a really good player at a mid-major. Like this is totally different. Um, Booth, you were a good player in the PAC 12. This is totally different. And that's why the goal is to try to stay old. Um, when you lose a player like Daniel Oturu to the NBA draft uh, early, you better go find somebody who can step in and be ready right away. But it just takes time. Um, it takes time for everybody in the locker room to understand what's the most important thing. And the most important thing is to get better every day and help Minnesota win. Um, but that's not – it seems like a simple message, but it's not as easy to grasp all the time. And normally when you're in a program and, you know, you're, you're, you're working hard for each other, you start to see it. But when you have a lot of new guys, that, that, that's a, a balancing act um, that our, our coaching staff certainly has to work uh, very, very hard to get them to understand. And Marcus, back to you. You probably don't want to look back at that Iowa game last year at home, but it seemed like, you know, this team this year, when you've had uh, some close games at the end, you've, been able to finish, uh, including, you know, overtime and then, you know, Marcus Carr's last second shot. Um, is there anything that you just can take from that last Il Il Iowa game where obviously down the stretch, there wasn't much uh, there for, for you guys? Well, Daniel missed some key free throws. I can say that now that he's in the NBA. Um, I watched it last night and I was, I was miserable. And my wife was like, why are you watching this? This is putting you in a bad mood. Uh, we actually, I took a lot of positive from it. Um, I don't, I don't remember the exact score, but I think it was in the high fifties. Uh, when was the last time somebody did that to Iowa? Right. I mean, so uh, we were leading a lot of the game. There was a lot to learn from, uh, you know, Iowa just made one or two more plays over us, but totally different team for us. Uh, there's some similarities, uh, you know, with their team, but it's uh, you know, we, we don't, there was a lot of guys on the court there last year that not on the court this year. So uh, we won't show much of that stuff from last year to our guys now, unless it's something that is a good teaching moment for them. 
of the finishing the games part, though, I mean, it seems like, like I said, the close games this year, you guys have made the plays that you needed to. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's still early, obviously, but you know, we've been able to hit, you know, we, we missed some crucial free throws last year. Uh, we've been able to knock down some crucial ones this year. Uh, obviously, Marcus made a big shot, but he also made a big shot versus Ohio State on the same exact play last year. Uh, you know, so every game is different. Um, just because we've won some close games in the past doesn't mean you're going to win the next close game. I mean, you know, you can draw from experiences, learn from, them, uh, you know, but every day is a unique challenge. So uh, we're sitting at seven and one uh, with six new guys trying to figure it all out in the pandemic. So there's a lot of great victories in that alone. Any other questions for coach? All right. Thanks, guys. I'll put it on the digital press box, and we'll see you on Friday. Thank you. Thank you.